Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. On Fridays, we talk about the product owner role in Scrum. We talk about patterns and anti-patterns that relate to ours and the team's collaboration with the product owner. And we've also put together a course to help you navigate that relationship. There's 18 modules, nearly eight hours of tools, techniques, videos, handouts, presentations you can use to help you and your team work better with your product owner. The course is available at bit.ly forward slash coach your PO. All lowercase, all one word, that's bit.ly forward slash coach your PO. And now on to the show, the product owner show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our TGIF Friday episode, the product owner episode this week with David Wallace. Hi, David. Welcome back. Hey, glad to be here. Absolutely. So, David, today's Friday and we talk product owners. And we do that because, of course, we know that our partnership with the product owner is potentially a critical one for the success of the team and the product. So let's start first by diving into what a product owner shouldn't be, but sometimes is, i.e. the product owner anti-pattern. So share with us what was potentially the worst product owner anti-pattern you've witnessed in your career. All right. So I I, I thought a lot about this. And the the anti-pattern that I would say is the worst that I've seen, and I see it actually fairly often, is the product owner that takes on the mindset of a project manager where they want to be able to promise a fixed date, fixed scope, this is what we're going to do. So they're telling their their stakeholders, here's what we're going to build, here's what it's going to look like, and here's when we're going to deliver it from the beginning of the project. And they're driving the team to try to hit all of those deadlines and build all of the features and do all of the things that they've promised without having gotten that team's buy-in, without taking that iterative approach and and being willing to change and sacrifice things as they learn things and maybe even adding some things as they learn things. Like they just have that fixed mindset of, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this whole big upfront planning. We know what we're going to build. And then we're going to go out and build that come hell or high water. And um, that it's probably what I've seen the most and, and really having to work with those product owners to try to get them to understand that iterative approach of, hey, we need to learn from what we're delivering, make those adjustments, make sure we're not building too much or the wrong thing as we go. And your stakeholders... But, but can what do you mean, David? Uh, I already have in my mind 20 or 30 features that are no-brainers. The only real challenge is to get them done. Yeah. Well, you know what? Those 30 or, or whatever features, we may end up building those. That's, that, that's possible. We may not need to build all of those. What if there's a way to build 15 features that meet all of the needs our customers really have? And they will say, but I already know. I don't need to ask the customers. I've been in this business for 20 years. I know what the customers need. Right. Well, you know, I, I get that. And um, people never cease to, to amaze me in our ability to overestimate our understanding of other people. And while the, I would say to that product owner, all 30 of those features may be valuable to someone, but are they the right features to build? Because if only one person uses that feature, okay, you've built something that's of value to somebody, but the amount of money that the company put into building that feature for the return that we're gonna get from it may not be worth it. Is it the right thing? And is there another way to approach it that might benefit more people? And also, is it the right time, even if it's the right thing? Because one of the things that, product owners that take on the project manager mindset, one of the things that they see the world as is just a 
sequence of tasks that can only be successful when all tasks have been completed, right? That's one of the basic definitions of a project is that if you haven't done the tasks in the work breakdown structure, then the project isn't done, right? And uh, in, in agile and uh, in customer centric product development, the goal is not to maximize the work done. In fact, just like it says right there in the manifesto, the, it's the art of minimizing the work done or maximizing the work not done, right? And and those are and that's a question we can't a, uh, answer uh, up front. That's a question that requires constant discovery and con- constant delivery by the team. So if we start with the idea that there's just these tasks we need to work on and that's it, period, then of course we're going to do all of those and only know what happens at the end because we made no effort to figure out if the ones that were ready early actually deliver enough value. Yep, that's absolutely the the kind of thinking that I try to get the my product owners to, to adopt and to embrace. And um, again, it's taking those moments to reflect throughout the project on, all right, have, what value have we delivered? What can we learn from that? What's the next most valuable thing to deliver? And then at some point, have we delivered enough value that we can move on to something different? Or are we just continuing to gold plate something that isn't really delivering that much value anymore? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, or, or even just doing things because they're in the plan. Yeah. No matter what value or even if they're gold plating. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and people get caught up in that. It's easy to get caught up in and and realizing that, especially if it's a feature you're super excited about, but then it turns out the customers don't really want it. Absolutely. All right, now we turn our attention to the opposite, the mirror image of that, which might have been, David, potentially the best product owner you've ever worked with. Describe them for us. Yeah, so um, the product owner I have in mind for this one is, he's amazing at getting people to, um, to buy into the the vision for the project and the way he does that is using uh utilizing continuous discovery and it not being something that he does on his own island but involving the engineering team involving the design team into that discovery process and inviting them in to be part of the user interviews to be part of the interviews um, for the particular project i'm thinking of a lot of their work is related to other teams throughout the company. And so they're interviewing these teams about how they built their product, how it, their part of the product works and how the changes we're proposing could affect them, how the things they're doing could affect the work that they're planning. And so the engineers are hearing it one way because they're thinking about the technology and the, the challenges that are gonna come with that. The product owner is thinking about the whole product side of it in terms of what the customer's experience is going to be. And then the design team is thinking about, like, are we giving them a really nice journey through our product when we move from this one product group to another product group in the workflow? Like, is that a seamless experience for them? And so by involving design and engineering in this discovery, this product owner is building really a, a great backlog that the entire team is built is um, bought into for how to build a product that's going to be useful for the company, for the end user, and it's going to give the customer a beautiful experience in moving through the product. Yeah, I, I especially like that aspect of the team thinking they're participating in a discovery process, which they are obviously, but thinking that's what they're doing, they're actually building the backlog they will be working on and because of that committing to doing it yes. right <clears throat> in the true sense of the word of commitment meaning that this is what i want to do not in the sense of yes i will try my best to deliver it on time even if i have to work overtime i'm not talking about that type of commitment i'm talking about the type of commitment where you say i believe in this i understand yes. why this matters right and that's a type of commitment you can't buy or you can cannot coax anyone into. They have to go through the learning aspect of that part of the process, which is the discovery, 
and and therefore themselves become a little bit also product owners. And the way I think of it is they do own the pro the team owns the product. The product owner is managing the backlog, thinking about the business aspect and some of that kind of stuff, but the team as a whole owns the product. And if you can get a team thinking that way, the product owner's job is a lot easier. And by the way this product owner approaches it and getting that buy-in and, and building this. And the other aspect is one of the things I see most product owners struggling with is what are the technical challenges to accomplish this thing I think the customer wants or the thing that the business needs. But by involving the engineering team along the way, they discover those things a lot sooner. And then they can make those adjustments early on in the process rather than getting to the end and realizing that, oh, wait a minute, this doesn't integrate with the system at all. We have to go and scramble and try to figure out how to, to rig this to, to sort of work most of the time. Um, so yeah, it, it's definitely a benefit to get that those learnings early as possible. And one learning that, uh, uh, or, or one insight from this conversation that just hit me is that, the, what, you know, the team is participating in the discovery and therefore what is it that we want to solve for the user and how we could do it, right? And it just hit me that actually what they're doing already at that time is that they're already thinking, how are we going to implement it? What do we need to change? Who do we need to talk to? And which means that they are uh, front-loading the design process based on the feedback they get from the users or the interviews that they do or you know prototype feedback whatever that might be so when it gets to actually doing the work they've done the hardest part already which is to understand why it's there what's the problem how might it look and also how might we develop it absolutely um that context is invaluable and being able to take them on that ride, once they get the story into a sprint, they, they don't have questions. They, they were part of the process of getting that story there. They may have written part of the story or the entire story themselves. So it's not like they don't have the context and end up halfway through the sprint realizing that they're doing the wrong thing. They get the story and they're like, yeah, this makes sense. I know exactly why we're building this or doing this story because it ties into this, this, and this that we discovered. Cool, let's go do this. And, and it really gets that team moving on a very, very efficient way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so David, uh, that was a great story, but unfortunately we're getting close to the end. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't want to go before you have the chance to tell us a little bit more about uh, your work and uh, where we can find you. Absolutely. So I do work for Zero, as you had mentioned uh, in the intro at the beginning of the week. My passion is for um, agile mindset. I know I've mentioned that probably in every episode this week, um, but the, that's why I'm involved with the Heart of Agile uh, movement. We actually have different meetups throughout the, the world. We have a, a Facebook group community. And really, the heart of Agile is a community. It's about that Agile mindset. It's about breaking Agile down. It's collaborate, deliver, reflect, and prove. If you're doing those things, you're working in an Agile way. And then what that looks like may be different for every single company. So that's what I'm passionate about, is helping people think about the Agile mindset to understand why we're doing the things we're doing. And um, I really have found that the more you get that mindset, you know, the tools, there's so many tools out there. Frameworks, they're just a tool. All of these, uh, Miro, Zoom, any of these other online things, they're tools that we can use and leverage to help bring that agile mindset to life and help empower these teams to deliver value to our customers, which, you know, at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. Absolutely. So, David, it's been a pleasure to have you here this week. So thank you very much. And uh, thank you for your generosity with your time and your knowledge. Absolutely. Thank you for giving me the platform and would love to connect with people on LinkedIn if they want to look me up. And I'm always happy to, to jump into conversations about Agile. Absolutely. And we'll put the links to David's uh, meeting points on the show notes, of course. David, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It's been, it's been great to be here. 
one more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is over. But there's a lot more we have to share. We have developed our own membership site where you find a community of active and engaged Scrum Masters. In this site, you get access to exclusive content and get to interact with us, your podcast hosts, as well as the best Scrum Masters in the world. Join us at scrummastertoolbox.com forward slash podcast and keep this podcast free of advertising. See you next week for one more week full of Scrum Master tips and tricks. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.